Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this one is lesson two. Uh, we're going to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines and what that means for their slopes. Um, so, uh, this is still in unit six obviously, um, but we're just on 6.2 now. So, uh, parallel lines are lines that have the same slope. Um, so as you can see on the screen, on, on your document, you have two lines and the rise and the run for both of those is 7 over 5. You count up for both of those, it is 7. You count over, it is 5. That means that they will never ever cross. No matter what you do, they will both go up 7 and over 5 and they'll stay the same distance apart. Uh, so since the slope of a, um, AB is equal to the slope of CD, those two lines are parallel. Um, let's explore a little bit about some lines. We're going to plot some points, draw some lines, uh, calculate some slopes, and find out the subtle differences between um, a parallel line and a close to parallel line. So, we have our example. Now, we're going to have three lines. So I've got three colors, uh, but you can just label them, no problem. I'm going to draw my grid. Uh, up to 7. I think you guys have up to 10. Um, but I get to draw mine. And I just take note of like how large the points get. So I think 7 is the largest. So let's do that. We've got a loose piece of paper. No problem. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 1, 2, 3, 4, six seven something like that now we're gonna plot some points so let's do line GH first uh, GH passes through minus four two so minus four and two is right here and H is two minus one so one two minus one is right there connect those lines and that is line GH GH is in the black. Let's label that. There we go. Now, uh, let's do the line JK. So J is minus 1 and 7. So back 1 and up 7. That's right there. And K is 7, 3. So over 7 and up 3, 1, 2, 3. Right here. Connect those lines. Now, they look like they could be close. They might be parallel in reality when we actually find out what their slopes are. But because my drawing is a little bit off and your lines might be a little bit off um, and your points might not be exactly on the corners, it might not be exactly clear if these are parallel or not. They look pretty close. Might it be my drawing? It definitely could be. Um, let's do, so that's J, K. Let's do the last line, MN, and then we'll calculate some slopes to find out um, what exactly um, is, if they're parallel or not. So let's do it. Uh, M is minus 4, 5. So minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up. That's right about there. And N is 5, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 1 up is right there. Connect those. So that looks like they all might be parallel, or maybe J and K and MN are parallel, maybe GH. It's, re it's really hard to tell. Let's do the calculations. So let's do MN first in the blue here. Um, let's see. Let's use the points. So we have MN. Now our MN points are minus 4, 5, and 5, 1. Let's find out the slope for that. So it is y2, so 1 minus y1, which is 5, over x1, x2, sorry, which is 5, minus a minus 4, because that's x1. We are left with 1 minus 5 is minus 4. 5 plus 4 is 9 we are left with minus 4 over 9 for a slope of mn. Let's do 
jk next we will do it right here jk the, the points for jk were let's see minus one and seven and seven three now it doesn't matter which way you do these as long as you're consistent so the slope is equal to three minus seven y2 minus y1 over seven minus a minus one that's x2 minus x1 that is so three minus seven is minus four and then seven plus one is eight this is negative a half for a slope so that means that these two are not parallel because they are not the same let's find out if the our leather line is parallel to either of these um, because they are different you can see that like minus four over nine is very close to minus a half um, so from our drawing they might look like they are but uh, when we did our calculation they we found that they're not parallel let's do our last one which is GH so line GH these points are minus four two and two minus one so the slope is equal to minus one minus a minus two that's y2 minus y1 we then have on the bottom two minus a minus four that's x2 minus x1 so that is minus one plus minus one plus two is one and then two plus four is that correct hmm, let me see here one minus a minus two that gets us one two subtract a negative four that's adding that six I feel like I did something incorrectly there um, let's see if I count if I just count from here um, I'm gonna go down from two to negative one so to me that is um, a rise of negative three and then I'm going to go over from four to two, and that is a run of six. So that to me is negative a half, which is parallel to this line. So I have made a mistake somewhere in here. Um, ah, this is not a negative two, this is just a two. This is just a two, right here. That is what happened. So that is just a two, which means that I am subtracting just a two here, which makes this a negative three, reduces to negative. Two. So um, if you make it, I got something that was a little bit off that I thought was not correct at all. One over six didn't make sense. So I went to my other method. That is going to be something that is going to happen to you too. And I hope that um, in real time, I just demonstrated how to fix that problem. Um, because I was really, really confused. I had to go backwards, and it turned out that I made one little mistake when writing it out right there. So um, definitely take your time uh, and go back. But what this means is that uh, JK and GH are parallel. So JK and GH are parallel lines. MN is nothing to them that's not parallel or perpendicular it is just a line with a different slope and it will cross at some point um, at some time off our graph um, let's go to the next problem uh, I see here so when we talk about perpendicular lines um, what we're gonna talk about is a line that has a negative reciprocal so I'm going to put the examples that I have here on the screen so um, perpendicular lines are lines that cross um, at a T. So when there is a line that is vertical and a line that is horizontal or some form of that as long as they make right angles. Now their slopes are negative reciprocals. So reciprocals uh, is flipping over the uh, fraction as we know from uh, our last unit. But then we have to make it negative. So if we have a slope of five over three, five thirds, the slope of the perpendicular line would be 3 over 5 and then made negative. So make negative 3 fifths. Uh, if you have a slope of 4, um, we are going to flip that over. 
So 1 over 4 and then make it negative. That's negative a quarter. If you have negative 1 over 8, you're of course going to flip it over. It just becomes 8 and then you make it positive. So that is just 8. Um, if you have a horizontal line, 0 over 1, uh, as we know, because 1 cannot go into 0, uh, or it would flip over to be a vertical line, and the same would go for the other way. If you had a vertical line, it would flip over uh, and be a horizontal line. That would be the perpendicular. Um, so let's map out some um, lines and find out which ones are perpendicular. So we have MN and OP this time. Let's make another graph. I see that they go all the way to 10. So I'm going to make mine a little larger. I believe yours has up to 10 on it already. So that's good. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'll make a mark at 5 to give myself a little bit of a better chance. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, I think I drew the lines a little bit different uh, in terms of their spacing. So uh, this is going to be something that's going to happen to you uh, where your drawing may not make it look completely correct. So that's why after we draw it, we're going to go to the um, actual slopes to find out and confirm. Let's do the line M, N first. Let's do it in red. Uh, I have a correction to note that the point M is actually minus 7, 2, and not uh, 7 minus 2. Um, so make that correction. So I'll just write it up here. M is minus 7, 2, and N is minus 2, 10. Uh, and then I'll write the O and the P over here. O is negative 3, 4, and P is 5, 1. So let's do this. We've got the point minus 7, 2. So minus 7 is here, and up 2 is right here. That is point M. And N is minus 2, 10. So that is minus 2 and 10 up here. We have a line that looks something like that. Uh, we are then going to do OP. So we have negative 3, 4. So 1, 2, 3, and then up 4 right there. And then 5, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1. And we are going to make a line something like that. Now, if we were to ex this line extends, as we know, and kind of looks like it might hit at a right angle. It kind of looks like it doesn't. Uh, it might be my drawing, it might not. Uh, but this is close enough to check. If we got something that was completely ridiculous, uh, like a line that was not even close, maybe something like this at the angle of my marker, we would not have to check to see if it is perpendicular, no matter how bad your uh, graph would be, you'd be able to tell. Um, so when it's close, now we need to check. So. Let's do that. Can I fit this here while I do it? Maybe. Let's see. Let's do the slope of MN first. So the slope equal to, um, we have 2 minus 10. So that is y2 minus y1. And then minus 7 minus a minus 2. That's x2 minus x1. So that is minus 12. Pardon me, that is minus 8 over minus 7 um, plus 2 is minus 5. So that means that this is actually 8 over 5. So the slope is 8 fifths for, the, for line MN. Okay, let's find out if the slope of OP is a negative reciprocal. So if it is, in fact, a perpendicular line, we are looking for a slope of negative 5 over 8. I flipped over the fraction, and I made it negative. Is that what it is? Let's find out. So slope is equal to 
y2, which is 4, minus y1, which is 1. Uh, x2 is minus 3, minus 5 is x1. So that is, let's see, 4 minus 1 is 3. And negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. We're left with negative 3 eighths. So not quite. Um, we can't see that. Huh. It's okay. I'll slide it up. So it's not quite um, a perpendicular line. Um, it is very close. Uh, if this was a 5 up top, then it would have been. So um, these are not perpendicular. Um, they're also not parallel because they're not the same. So neither parallel or perpendicular. And if I spelled anything wrong there, um, that's okay. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Um, we've got a couple more. Let's do these rather quickly. So we have up to, looks like seven. So let's draw our grid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's negative seven. Four, five, six, seven, negative seven. Seven and seven. We have the line ST. Let's do that in red. S is negative two, seven. So that's minus two and up seven right there. That is point S. I made it a money sign, I don't know why. And t is 2 minus 5. So that's over 2 and down 5. Wow. OK, that's right about there. That is a strange line. It goes all the way across. Not too bad a connection. Uh, let's do line uv in blue. Line uv passes through u, negative 2, 3. So that's negative 2 and up 3. 1, 2, 3. Right about there. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then it passes through V, which is 7, 6. So all the way over here and up here, like this. And then we have two lines that intersect. They look like they might be perpendicular. Let's see if they are negative reciprocals of one another. So, um, yeah, go side to side. We have the point ST. So the slope of ST is equal to minus 5 minus 7, y2 minus y1, and then 2 minus a minus 2. That is um, x2 minus x1. This is equal to minus 13, minus 12, sorry, divided by. 4 plus 2, uh, 2 plus, 2 plus 2 is 4 is what I'm trying to say. So this is negative 3 for the slope of that line. Let's find out the line, uh, the slope of line UV, and we will see if they are negative reciprocals. So the slope is equal to y2 minus y1, so that is 6 minus 3, and then we have x2, which is 7 minus a minus 2, which is x1, that is 3 over 7 plus 2 is 9. Uh, do I have that correct? I believe so, that is 1 third. So this, these two are negative reciprocals. If I was to take 3, flip it over, and make it negative, um, I would have 1 third. So that means these are perpendicular lines. Let's do that in black, just to keep a theme. Perpendicular. Excellent, good for us. So, um, drawing the lines on the graph and then calculating their slopes to find out um, how they relate to one another. You can also count um, to check your work, but uh, I wanna see something like this um, so that I know that you know what you are doing. I'm not just looking at the graph. Let's do the next one. Let's do this example. We have, looks like the points, ooh, it's something different, okay. So determine the slope of a line that is perpendicular to the line E, uh, F. Uh, determine the coordinates of G, so the line EG is perpendicular to that line. Okay, 
so what we're going to do is we're going to draw uh, the line EF, choose any point on that line, and then find the negative reciprocal of its slope and use that to count out the dots. Uh, might sound like a lot right here, but I think we can do it. It looks like we only go up to four. So I'll draw mine to like six, let's say, to give myself some space. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Let's draw in the points of the line that we're given. We're given E, which is two, three. So over two and up three, that's right here. It's point E and point F, which is minus four, minus one. So that's over four and down one this way. So we have this line, E, F. Now, what we gotta do is we gotta calculate its slope and then find its negative reciprocal so that we can draw a perpendicular line. So, um, the slope of this line is equal to y2 minus y1, so that is minus 1 minus 3 over minus 4 minus 2, x2 minus x1. That equals, so minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4, and then minus 4 minus 2 is minus 6. This cancels out the negatives, that's 2 thirds. Okay, so the slope of this line, e f is two thirds. So the slope of our new line that we're going to call um, E G, so we're going to connect it to E. Uh, the slope of our new line E G is equal to negative three half. Right, we're flipping it over to make three halves and then making it negative negative three halves. So I can count from my point E down three and over two to locate the point G, which is on our new line. So if I go down three, this is two, this is on three already. So I go to this zero line and then over two, one, two. Puts me a point right here, uh, which means that I can now connect these because E is also on the line. To show a point that's on two lines, I have to put a circle around it so that you can see it. It's not like coloring in both and making it just black. So now I can connect these. That is a line that is perpendicular to the line EF. Um, you need to find, draw the line, find its slope, find the negative reciprocal of it, and then um, draw the line using our steps from previous lessons where we just count on the graph down three and over two. Now remember that any line that has a negative slope should be down and to the right. Uh, if it is going up and, to, up and to the right when you have a negative slope, um, you've done something wrong when you're drawing your line. Uh, there is one more thing to do, I believe. There's a try it on your own. So pause it here and then come back when you're done and we'll see how we did. Okay, we have A, B, C, D. Is it a parallelogram? Is it a rectangle? So um, what we want to know is if there is making a right angle, the, the lines, the vertical lines and the horizontal lines are the, the close to that. Now it's not uh, completely clear because it is on an angle, um, but let's find out if it makes right angles by finding out if they are perpendicular with one another, um, which means finding out their slopes. So let's find the slope of line AB first. Okay, we find the slope uh, if we just count it, we go down four, one, two, three, four, and over one. So the slope for this line is negative four over one. Now, um, we could have like written out the points and um, done the calculation, and I expect you probably did that. Um, hopefully you came out with negative four. Um, the line BC, so that is one of the horizontal lines, it has a slope of, it goes over eight. So over eight, that is the bottom one. I don't know why I did that one first. It goes over eight and it goes up two. So that is there, which means we have a slope of one quarter, okay? So we have to compare these two slopes and we find that they are negative reciprocals of one another. Uh, negative, 
reciprocals. Therefore, um, the lines are perpendicular. Now, does this mean that it's a rectangle? Absolutely, this means that it's a rectangle, um, which is great news uh, for us because rectangles are also parallelograms. All the sides are parallel. Um, so that is how we find out um, what kind of a shape we have. It might have been a trapezoid if the lines were angled in or a little bit different. Um, but because they are negative reciprocals, the lines are perpendicular and it is a rectangle. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Uh, but thanks very much for watching.